Hey there, I'm Byron Nimmert and I want to welcome you to the first of a five-part video series titled New to EBC. This series is designed specifically to give you a snapshot of who we are as a church, why we do what we do, and how you could get involved. At Eagle Brook, we don't just have a vision statement, we have a vision culture because we've learned as a church how important it is to be united behind a common mission. The foundation of our vision culture is our core beliefs. These beliefs are vitally important as we've built everything we do on these biblical truths. Recently, Dale Peterson unpacked our vision culture for a group of people. Let's join in. Well, one of the things I've noticed when people come to Eagle Brook Church for the first time, they're just amazed. They're like, I didn't think church could be like this. I'll never forget my first time. Absolutely changed my life and my family's life, and I love coming to Eagle Brook Church. I want to talk to you about why it might be different and what we do differently that might set us apart from, from other churches. So let's get into that right away. Uh, I remember a long time ago, I took my son to get his hair cut. And we went to one of these chain stores, and while we were waiting in line for him to get his hair cut, I saw on the wall a vision statement. And it was so sun bleached, it had been there so long you could barely read it anymore. And then I looked down the aisle where all these people were cutting hair, and I thought, I wonder how many of them who work for this company even know what this vision statement says. And something just kind of clicked inside of me is that Eagle Brook Church doesn't need a vision statement. It needs a culture. We need to build a culture around the vision God has given us. And so Eagle Brook Church, everywhere you look, you'll never find a vision statement, but you'll see we have a vision culture. So I want to talk to you today about this vision culture. Right away, the first building block of our vision culture is beliefs. Not all of our beliefs, just the most important beliefs. Beliefs are kind of funny. They unite people, but if you get too many of them, it begins to divide people. So really the challenge for us is, what are our foundational beliefs that will bring unity to this church? And I'm even going to write that word in here, foundation. And to illustrate this, I like to use a bullseye. Um, our foundational beliefs are beliefs that we're willing to die for. I'm not willing to die for all my beliefs, but these I want to die for. There's another ring that aren't as much important, but they're important to us that we feel at Eelbrook we can defend in Scripture, but not every church agrees with us. But that's okay because we all agree on the main thing that we can die for. And then finally, there are these beliefs that we're willing to discuss. But there isn't clear answers. And you just need to know, at Eagle Brook Church, we don't focus on these things. You'll never hear us getting into arguments about issues where there's no clear answer in Scripture. We put all of our leadership and all of our energy into the things that we're willing to die for. So what are those things? Well, it's things like, we believe that there's one living, sovereign God who eternally exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he was sent here to earth, fully God and yet fully human, lived a perfect life. And Jesus willingly laid down his life. He was literally executed on a Roman cross. He died and he rose from the grave three days later. And in doing that, he fulfilled my, my, my debt of sin. And then we believe that Jesus and the Father sent the Holy Spirit to live in every single believer. So the Holy Spirit lives in those who follow Christ, and he convicts us, and he comforts us, and he guides us. But it's really critical that you understand he takes up residence in our life. And then we have some beliefs about people. We believe that God created people in his image, and everyone matters to God. But every person is a sinner and needs to be saved. And then finally, those people who do put their faith in Christ, those are the people who have eternal life. Those are the people who are saved. And it's just critical that we are a church that wants to do something to help people come to Christ. The last thing here is we have beliefs about the church, 
Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And everyone who believes in him is part of the church, not just this local church, but the entire church. And then we believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And it's really the supreme authority in how we behave, how we treat each other, and what we believe. And then finally, we believe that Jesus Christ will return and there will be a final judgment. 